one of the major reason of using hormonal contraceptives is controlling birth but we have other things that they can do and your doctor might prescribe you a hormonal contraceptive to treat several things i'm going to give you 10 of them and uh, yeah so that in case you go to a hospital you have a certain thing then they give you hormonal contraceptives you might as well understand the reason why they are giving you this now the first one is regulating the menstrual cycles now sometimes when you're having those irregular cycles is because you are overproducing a certain hormone or you don't have a certain hormone during the cycle you have the four of them now if you don't have then uh, they are replacing that hormone. If, for example, it's estrogen, then they are going to replace that using an estrogen-based pill or an injection or whatever that they are going to use as a hormonal contraceptive. If you have an overproduction of a certain hormone, then uh, they, are, they are going to give you a hormone that will counter the effect of the other. So that's why they are going to give you that hormonal contraceptive. Now, something, I want you to understand something uh, very interesting. Okay, not interesting per se, but uh, now, you see you're treating the symptom. If you have irregular menses due to underproduction of a certain hormone, unless you fix the production, if you stop taking the pill, then you'll go back to having the irregular menses. Because I see people usually complain about, hey, I stopped taking the pill, but then I went back to the way I was. I was having irregular menses. I, I went just directly back to that. So this is the reason. Unless you know exactly what's causing that, then you fix it. You'll continue taking the pill until you get your menopause. Overproduction, the same thing. Anyway, let's go to number two. Uh, this is... Uh, if you usually suffer from uh, those painful periods and uh, those excruciating pain uh, before you get to um, your periods and especially during your ovulation, your doctor might give you the pill to either stop ovulation or to make it a little bit less, I don't know, less painful. Uh, now, if you stop ovulation, it means that um, now you might as well not get the menses in the first place. So the effects of having that will be less. Now, so, for example, um, what usually happen when you are close to your ovulation, progesterone is one that usually trigger you to produce prostaglandins that usually initiate the pain and all the things that will happen before you get your menses or during your menstrual uh, cycle, uh, like the contraction of the uterine wall to shed the uterine lining. Now, if we can stop that, then uh, the pain will be less or maybe you're not going to have pain at all. But then, remember, this is still temporary. You are treating the symptom. Treating uh, the actual cause is a little bit deeper than just superficial because you'll have to know exactly what's uh, causing exactly this. And you might know exactly what's causing you to have the excessive pain, but you're not able to fix that. So you might as well live with the pain forever. But if the pain is disturbing or distracting your personal life, then you just go for the pill or maybe go for an injection that will take you for five months or, or no, the three months or maybe that one, the implant that should take you for five years, it's upon you. But your doctor will help in arriving at the best contraceptive that you're going to use now. We have those people usually suffer from hormonal acne due to overproduction of androgens. You can get, uh, if for example, whatever is happening is uh, you have everything normal, the weight is normal, but uh, you have hormonal acne. It might be due to overproduction of androgens. And uh, the way you counter this is now using the female hormones, the estrogen. Now, if they give you the pill, that will increase that um, the amount of estrogen that you have. And it means that now the effects of the androgens will be reduced because they usually work in counter effects. So when one is high, the other one will go. So they are going to give you estrogen to suppress the androgens. Number four, estrogen usually predisposes you to uterine cancer among other cancers. So it just predisposes you to that. It doesn't actually cause, but it predisposes you to that. If there is a high risk, your doctor detects that maybe you might be at a risk of getting uterine cancer, then you can be given a combination pill that will help reduce the risk. And uh, let's go to number five, which is now reducing the risk of ovarian cyst. Now, if you stop the ovulation, no maturation exactly, if you can stop that, then um, you're not going to have the ovulation and the, the eggs will just stay intact. Because if you remember well, when you're talking about uh, PCOS, what usually happens is, Ovulation takes place, you have that egg, and instead of that egg being released during the ovulation, it doesn't happen. So it remains within that sac and it creates that cyst. They usually accumulate with uh, every cycle, so if you want to stop that, or maybe you're planning to reduce them. I've actually seen studies that uh, show a progressive reduction of the cyst by using contraceptive methods. Anyway, we go to number six. Today, I'm not going to explain as much. Okay, I might... 
I'll try. Now, we have uh, those who usually suffer from PMS and PMDD. PMS is premenstrual syndrome and PMDD is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Now, this usually happen due to the hormones directly. Okay, there is no actual known cause, but then hormones usually take a huge role when it comes to this. You get those PMDDs or PMS due to the fluctuations in the hormonal values in your body and uh, you can use hormonal contraceptives to counter the effects of the ones that are usually being overproduced number seven it usually help in managing endometriosis i think we made a video about endometriosis but then i'm going to make another one a dedicated one because i think i mentioned it in another video so endometriosis is uh when the uterine lining you see what you usually lose every month, the blood, it comes from the uterine lining being shed off. Now imagine that one growing somewhere else apart from your uterus, maybe in your abdominal cavity. Now, if it's growing there, during the time when you're supposed to shed it, that blood will also be shed, even if it will be in a confined place where by now that blood will just be sitting somewhere. And now your immunity will come and start fighting off whatever is now pulling there. So that's when you're going to have that inflammation. That's why endometriosis can be so painful. And um, one of the things people are usually advised to do is to have um, hormonal replacement therapy. Or you find that uh, if you're overproducing estrogen, and most of the cases when you're mentioning endometriosis, most of the time you're also going to mention estrogen at some point. So you're going to use drugs that will either lower production of estrogen or the drugs that will um, counter the effects of uh, that estrogen because chances are high that you're overproducing that. Now, we have so many things that you can use. You can have uh, birth control pills, you can have IUDs that are hormonal. They are usually good to manage this. And uh, sometimes even um, surgery, can cure this because if you can know the actual point where that uh, the where this the lining is growing at then uh, you remove every aspect or everything there then uh, prognosis becomes way way better number eight it can help with our menstrual migraines now we have people usually suffer from uh, excruciating pain in their heads due to maybe the menses are close or maybe you are getting your menses during that period you can get those migraines that are very disturbing so they're actually linked to a drop in uh, estrogen and progesterone and a combination pill will uh, give you the relief but then uh, if you drop uh, out of the pill again uh, you're still going to get the menstrual migraines now number nine it gives you the freedom to bleed when when you want. Now, in this one, I think I need to like make a clarification because now, when you're taking that uh, monthly pill where you take a pill every day, every day, if for example, you're supposed to take it for 28 days, you're supposed to take active pills to, for 21 days, and then for the rest of the seven days, either you stop taking them or you can just continue taking the inactive pills that usually are just placebos. They don't have hormones. But some of them might contain something like uh, iron supplements, so it helps in boosting your blood. So you might either decide to take them or not. During this period, you are bleeding. If you want to, if you don't want to bleed, you can instead of taking the placebos or those inactive pills, you can pick the next month's pack and then you start. Con you just continue. When you want to uh, to bleed, okay, this is not your menses. But if you want to bleed, this is just your body shedding off the world because you've been on uh, hormones. It's your body trying to breathe, in quotes. So uh, if you want to bleed, you just, you just don't use the pills. If you want to continue not bleeding, then you still use the pill. Was I clear? Okay. When you want to bleed, you just stop using the pill. But if you want to not bleed, then you continue using the pills. All the way. You continue the pills, the active ones, and then after you stop, then you continue the rest. Now, let's go to number 10, which I think is the, the last one. It usually reduces the risk of uh, anemia. Now, we have people who usually overbleed, so you get those heavy bleeding, or you get uh, your menses for like seven days instead of um, maybe the usual three or four. You're, you're losing a lot of blood. Or maybe you have other underlying conditions that are taking a toll on your red blood cells, but you're still also getting your menses. So reducing or making your anemia even um, to be a little bit more worse. So you take the pills that stop the bleeding or it makes your uh, the menses a little bit lighter, you're going to save blood, meaning that you're not going to use as much. So if you have another cause of uh, your anemia, 
it's going to improve over time because um, they are not losing as much. But I hope you remember this, we are treating the symptom. If we can be able to skip, maybe we are going to skip for like uh, several menstrual periods. You're not going to get your menses. You have uh, preserved some of that blood for your own body. Or if you're over bleeding on, and you don't have any other underlying condition, it means that um, now if you make your period later, you are also preserving some of that. You're saving the blood that you could have lost. So anemia, if you have a risk of anemia, it improves.